What is up guys, I'm Daddy Gamer Fred and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon News Daily, a daily Pokemon show where I go over Pokemon news spamming across all the Pokemon games, including Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Pokemon Quest, Pokemon Go, and of course, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee Games. Today is Thursday, July 12th, 2018, and oh my god, we got a ton of news to go over, especially with the Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee trailers dropping today. Oh my god, we're gonna go over those as well in this video. But before we jump into that, let's go over the little bit of news that came out today as well. So the first news story of today is gonna be that the Pokemon Company and Funko Pop has finally teamed up to make Pokemon Funko Pop fit. Now, obviously, the first Funko Pop figure that's going to be made is Pikachu. Now, here's an image of Pikachu. It's going to be exclusive at Target in the U.S. And to be honest, it looks kind of creepy. Now, I like Funko Pop figures just like anybody else. I kind of feel like they should have went with a little bit of white on the eyes. Now, here's somebody on Twitter doing that. And oh my God, it just looks so much better with the white in the eyeballs. But I understand this is Funko Pop's thing where they all the eyes are just blacked out. Pikachu, again, does look weird. This is um, images, again, from Twitter of somebody actually getting their hands on one or Early. and here's the box and stuff like that it looks kind of creepy I need to see it in person so I can kind of get grasp on how it feels but that's how pretty much all the Funko Pop looks to me when I see it online or see images of it I'm immediately turned off by it but when I once I see it in person and see the craftsmanship of the figure I 100% change my mind on it and I end up buying even ones that I don't even know where they're from but I just like collecting them and I'm just addicted to collecting Funko Pop so there's I gotta make room for eight 800 plus more because Pokemon, you know, they're going to keep rolling out these Pokemon Funko Pops. And especially when this Pikachu one goes on sale, it's going to be sold out everywhere. So if you're trying to look to grab your hands on one, it's going to be exclusive at Target in the US. I'm pretty sure it's going to be elsewhere as well online and stuff like that. So you wouldn't have to worry about this a quote unquote target exclusivity on it. But let me know in the comment section below what are your thoughts on Funko Pop and Pokemon finally teaming up and making Funko Pops for Pokemon. Now, the second news story is about Pokemon Duel. A new Queen Cup event has begun in Pokemon Duel. This is coming from Cerebeat.com. This cup has you play against players and earn high scores with various rewards based on it. It runs until July 26th and offers a brand new Eloan Sandshrew and Eloan Ninetales figures for getting enough points. Like always guys, let me know your thoughts on this brand new Pokemon Duel update. I'm not a constant player of Pokemon Duel, so this is gonna be something I've been skipping out of, but let me know your thoughts nonetheless in the comment section below. Now following the trend of yesterday with everything getting a brand new patch update for pretty much every Pokemon game that's out now, besides Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon surprisingly, Pokemon Quest for Android and iOS has been updated and gets a brand new patch. This brings Pokemon Quest up to version 1.0.2. It provides minor bug fixes, kind of like what we've seen with the Nintendo Switch version. It also adds a special mobile only quest, which gives you 100 PM tickets for the first time you create a backup data for your game. Again, I am addicted to Pokemon Quest. I've been playing it nonstop on my Switch. Which I still haven't gotten up to Mewtwo yet. I'm doing the same thing on my phone. I'm playing a different save file and it's just as addicting as having it on my Switch. I jump in pretty much daily to check out what's the daily Pokemon. They gave away 500 PM tickets for this kind of same update yesterday on the Nintendo Switch version. So it's kind of good to see them basically giving an incentive for the mobile version to actually earn PM tickets as well. Let me know if you're playing Pokemon Quest on your mobile phone in the comment section below, just like I am. Now, before we talk about the Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee game brand new trailers, we have to 
talk about Pokemon Go, it wouldn't be a Pokemon News Daily if we didn't bring up Pokemon Go, obviously. So we got some news, as always, Niantic rolling out the daily news drops for Pokemon Go, especially during this Pokemon Go special summer event and stuff like that that it got going on. So let's jump into it. This is coming directly from PokemonGoLive.com. I'm going to have a link to this news article in the description below so you guys can check it out. It says, unlock Zapdos Day during Professor Willow's Global Challenge. It says, are you guys ready for round two of Professor Willow's Global Challenge? Starting July 14th, Throughout July 15th, each area of the world will have to meet the challenge requirements during Pokemon Go Fest in Chicago. If each area achieves its respective goals, candy-related bonuses will unlock starting on July 16th including bonuses for catching Pokemon and participating in raid battles. Trainers can also unlock a bonus to reduce the distance needed to hatch eggs. And that is so clutch, especially with all these Alolan eggs that we're getting as gifts. We need this. We need this. So if all the goals are reached, Trainers all over the globe will be able to receive up to five free raid passes when they spin a photo this at gyms during Zapdos Day. Featuring the legendary Pokemon Zapdos on Saturday, July 21st, Zapdos will be exclusively available in raid battles around the world for a three hour period. During that time, all Zapdos caught will know the fast attack Thundershock and you might even be able to encounter a shiny Zapdos. Now, here's the thing. Here's regular Zapdos and here's shiny Zapdos. Can you spot the difference? <laughs> With that out the way, um, let me know your thoughts on Shiny Zapdos. And to me, it's literally the same thing. It's just a tint darker, I might say. But let me know what do you think about Shiny Zapdos in the comment section below. So I think this is pretty cool. Once we got Articuno Day, I kind of figured that the next thing in line was going to be Zapdos Day, was going to be Moltres Day. We got them already in Research Box, but they weren't Shiny. And then now, now that we're getting this, day where we can just hunt these legendary birds for three hours to me it, it is, it's like another community day for the month which is great and it's based on a legendary which is great and it's releasing the shiny of these legendary which is again it's great so i think this is a great idea and a great way to roll these legendaries out as well as getting the community together to complete challenges to kind of Make us feel like we're earning this. Even though, to be honest, with the such huge player base, I think we're going to unlock these rewards regardless. But there are going to be tons of players and tons of Pokemon Go communities out there that are going to participate in this so they can make sure they get that shiny Zapdos. And I, I do think this is a great way to, again, get players out there playing. Now, talking about getting players out there playing, as you guys know, because of the extreme weather conditions in Japan, Niantic has postponed the Community Day for Squirtle and Articuno and the special weekend event. So we actually getting news on when those events are going to actually be taking place. This is coming from Cerebi.net. Let's jump into it. It says following their delay due to an extreme weather in Japan, Niantic has confirmed that the Squirtle Day and the Articuno Day will run on August 4th. 2018 in Japan. The Articuno Day will run between 12 to 15 Japanese Standard Time and the Squirtle Spawns will begin to run from 15 to 18 Japanese Standard Time. In addition to this, the special XP bonus that was earned at the Safari Zone will also run at this time as well. I think this is pretty cool. Again, for those players, for the people that were affected of this extreme weather condition that has been going on in Japan, my thoughts and prayers to everyone that's out there, if there was anyone hurt or whatever, I, I again, I give my hats off, kudos to Niantic for actually postponing this and thinking about the people out there that they weren't going to be able to participate and not just have the events run and then no one participated because it was too dangerous. Again, coming from Cerebi.net, it says a new special weekend event has been announced for Korea on July 29th. If you obtain a ticket or lottery, what is that? Is that a lottery? A 7-Eleven or SK Tecmo? What the f 
Fuck are these stores? You'll be able to see special spawns of Dratini, Unknown S, Unknown L, and Unknown T. With this, there will also be double experience for today, which again, I think this is pretty cool. I wish they bring something like this to America or to other countries so we can just, you know, go to like GameStop or, you know, Sprint, buy a ticket, enter the code and have a special weekend event, you know, <laughs> around the world. I don't see why this will be a Japan only event. I think this is just to get these events kind of rolling and starting. Again, it does feel kind of pay to win-ish, but let me know your thoughts on it in the comment section below. So without a shadow of a doubt, the biggest news story of today is that we got brand new trailers for Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee. Now I say trailers with an S because we got an American trailer as well as the Japanese trailer. And there is different stuff in each trailer as always. So what I'm gonna do here is actually just go over this, the highlights that Cerebi kind of put together as a rundown of show so we can just get through both of the trailers and show you guys new content that hasn't been revealed that got revealed via these trailers. I will be doing my own analysis video on these trailers. Should be up by the end of the week or maybe even Monday as the earliest. I'm gonna try to get it up during this weekend, but since it's two trailers, there's gonna be a lot to go through and I'm gonna make sure I don't get copyright strike and have the video banned worldwide. I need to make sure that I kind of work around that. So I'm gonna be testing the waters with how my video style is gonna look for those. So be on the lookout for my trailer analysis on those trailers. So without no further ado, let's run it down. Eevee has a special gender difference in this game, a love heart heart style tail you can also give Pikachu and Eevee haircuts which blew my mind when I seen this the special Eevee heart style tail is kind of cool it kind of reminds me of the Pikachu female also having the heart so I think that's what they were going for they wanted a visual way to tell the difference between the EV male and EV female I think that's pretty cool for me it's a female all the way I'm going if female EV if I get the EV game I'm getting female Pikachu if I get the Pikachu game either way it's a girl with the army fatigue camo because that is so lit. The haircuts is kind of weird. The haircuts is kind of weird. It kind of fits Eevee. On Pikachu, it looks like a toupee. It looks like almost like Donald Trump toupee on e on Pikachu. Oh my God, it's just like, I don't know what it is. It's just, I need to see it in person. I need to see it in my game. Maybe I feel differently, but looking at it in these trailers, it's just like, wait, what? We can give them haircuts? You can give Eevee a bowl cut? Like, <laughs> it's so funny, but it's cute. I understand why they're doing it. Let me know your thoughts on giving them haircuts in the comments because it, to me, it's kind of funny. So with the trailers, we did get a few version exclusive Pokemon differences that got explained. We got Oddish. Sandshrew, Growlithe are gonna be exclusive to Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu, while Bellsprout, Vulpix, and Meowth are gonna be exclusive to Let's Go Eevee. So if you haven't seen these trailers, obviously I'm gonna have them linked in the description below. I also did my reaction videos. I'm gonna have that in the description below as well. So you guys can check out my reaction to both of these trailers. I think these trailers was cool. It, you know, it showed off a lot of stuff that we wanted to see, but it, I felt like there were kind of teases in th these trailers alluding to other stuff, which that I'm gonna kind of get to again on my trailer analysis video. But if you want to take your take and just run through pictures and stuff, I'm gonna have links to the Sarah B photo gallery of these trailers as well and they spot out a ton of stuff that I noticed while just looking at the photo gallery that seeing the difference between what's in these Let's Go games and what was in the Pokemon special Pikachu edition back in the day. It just, to me, is night and day. And it's just so amazing on how far we came and how great these games look on the Nintendo Switch. I can't wait to get my hands on them. Let me know in the comment section below what your thoughts 
on these trailers? Are you hyped to give Pikachu a haircut? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Like always, guys, I'm Daddy and my Fred on Instagram and Twitter, and you guys can bring the conversation there. I'm the American gamer in Switzerland right here on YouTube, and yes, I'm going to be doing a ton of videos just like this one. So if you enjoy, please hit that subscribe button. Also, hit the like button. It does help me out a ton as far as growing the channel is concerned. Ring the bell if you want to be notified on the next time I drop a video. Peace. I'm going to see you guys on the next one.